that rescued you and you are now the child of God what about these people what about your country what about your nation what about the people in your country did they are already rescued you are already a child of God it is our responsibility Pray your own country. Pray your own nation. Cry out for your people. There is the video that I watched sent from British. I saw these people, they are walking on the street naked. Then it's come in my mind, it says, What is going on to this world? Where is the shame of the people? Why is this happening? so sad from my heart then I remember the Sodom and Gomorrah it destroyed that city because of their wickedness so what about you you are now the child of God cry out pray for your nation pray for your, your nation where you are belong cry out pray 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 and pray Pray for your nation, for the people of your own nation. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, what is going on in my country, Philippines? Oh God, I cry out now, Lord. I cry out for the people in my nation. For the people in my country, oh God, these things happen in my realm, oh Lord. I know and I believe that this is a warning. Looking for the people to lift up their hands and cry to you. That they are looking, that they are believing, that there is a God to do everything in this nation. Hallelujah. So please, Lord, give mercy for my nation. Give mercy for the salvation. Open the salvation and touch the heart of the people in the Philippines. Oh God. Please, Lord, please, Lord. I cry out to you for my country, for the people of my nation, that let them open their heart and look up in their head and look up their face and raise up, Lord, and call upon your name. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you Father God, and also this country, and also this nation of Russia, oh God I pray for you, I pray for you that bless this nation, oh God work in this nation, oh God and let your kingdom work in this nation, hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah hear all the Christian in this congregation, cry out for their nation, thank you Jesus for that, oh God, that you give us, you give us this heart to cry for the people in our own nation, thank you Jesus for that, Lord, thank you Jesus Lord Thank you, and I know and I believe that you heard our prayer, that you heard our cry. We give you all the praise and glory and adoration. In Jesus' name, amen.
Father, you are so close to each and every one of us and we live to serve you. Yes, yes God, we belong to you. Yes, Father, today we want to confess our love to you. Yes, God, we want to confess that we are your children. We want to confess that we are ready. We want to fulfill your will upon this earth. God, we want the world to know you. We want people all over the world to love you. Father, be glorified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ among us. And may your love draw people from all over the world, from all over the world unto you. Hallelujah. I would like to invite you to recognize God's life and God's presence in your neighbors. To understand that Holy Spirit, God Himself, fills the heart of the person, of the believer in Jesus Christ that stands next to you. You know, let, let, let's, let's do it, give Him hugs. Well, find at least 10 people that don't look like you and give a good hug. the righteous you cover them with favor as with a shield hallelujah you know in my life it wasn't always that I felt righteousness it uh, wasn't even always that I felt being righteous when I became Christian and uh, there was a point when I understood I have to believe the Word of God. There was a point when I understood I shouldn't rob Him. I shouldn't rob the one who is my majesty. <laughs> and I decided, well, maybe, may, maybe my family will still put ends together. <laughs> maybe my little children will still be able to live if I will give the tenth part to the Lord, if I will bring offerings, I will give alms to the people. Since I started doing that, this wonderful feeling of being righteous, do not leave me. <laughs> if it leaves me, I come to the Lord and ask forgiveness. You know, and this is such a great feeling to know, to feel that you are a righteous person. Not for the pride, not for the sake of hum, human pride, but, but just, just to feel that you are so close to your God. And He puts you in favor with other people. And He directs your life with His tremendous mighty hand and he is my father and he takes care of my problems I would like to invite you to do the same if you haven't been thinking about giving your tithes to the Lord about bringing your offerings to the house of God start it today don't feel guilty. Don't think like, wow, I'm a Christian for three months. What should I do with those three months that I didn't give tithes? 
Don't worry. <laughs> Just start today. And you will feel righteous. And you will feel no fear in your life. Apart from the fear of God. And you will feel the love of the Lord just overwhelming you. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen? Amen. Father, thank you for this opportunity to bring offerings to you in this church. I ask you, God, to bless our lives. I ask you, God, to release your blessings upon every person. Upon those who do not have a lot. Upon those who have big riches. We all need to be enriched by you. Deal with our hearts. Deal with our lives. And use us for your glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now I am so happy to invite Joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know why I'm nervous. <laughs> but I would like to greet to all the father out there. Happy Father's Day.
Good morning. How's everyone doing today? Praise the Lord. Just by show of hands, let me see all my teenagers here. Everybody from the youth group. Oh, you know what? Like, looks like your numbers are growing, actually. No, I was just, uh, I was just curious how many of you be alive by this morning after the picnic we had yesterday. And uh, we tore up five kilograms of grilled chicken and played uh, fo soccer. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean football, African style, barefooted. You know, Vitaly, we saw your socks. Anyway, sorry. Too much information probably. But anyways, I'm glad to see you guys. And I really love this group of people that we had. And, uh, you know, just keep praying for the youth group. Keep praying for us. But um, um, I have a question for you. How many of you can say that you are, uh, that you are happy? All right, all right. All the preachers, right? All right, let me ask you another question. How many of you think that, oh, how many of you believe that you are content? Okay, I see all three of you. How about, all right, let me ask you this question. What do you guys think? Happiness and contentment, is it the same thing? Do they go together somehow? All right. Which one do we need more? All of the above. Hey, listen to the man of God right here. <laughs> no wonder he's the leader of the prayer team. All right, guys. Uh, little, little discussion, but um, um, of course, if we um, turn your Bibles with me to Philippians chapter 4. And... Um, I'm going to read a small passage and uh, I have to be really quick today because we still got a lot of things going on in the service. But um, if we go like most of the people, if we go to the Webster's Dictionary, we'll uh, look up happiness, look up contentment. I mean, not necess it, it doesn't necessarily mean that we always should, uh, in order to get the biblical understanding of things, we need to always go there. But sometimes it helps. So happiness has two definitions, state of well-being and contentment slash joy. Okay? Second one, pleasurable and satisfying experience. Contentment, state of being happy and satisfied. Anyway, so they pretty, sometimes I guess they can be used interchangeably, sometimes they can be Two different things. Um, sometimes they could be a bit confusing, but we're not going to go too deep into the uh, um, the dictionary definitions and the worldly understanding. Although uh, uh, of these two two words, right? But we need to. Sometimes it's good to still kind of like know where people are at and uh, before we actually go into the Word of God. Now. A lot of us want to be content. How many of you want to be content with your life? I mean, well, I'm sure everybody, right? It's a no-brainer, right? Uh, nobody wants to be discontent. Um, a lot of us want to be content, but for a lot of us, something is missing. And we feel like, man, if I could only add this to my life, everything would be great. I will be content, you know. And then some of us get that thing you guys are looking for. And then, boom, okay, well, I'm happy for the entire two days, you know, and then you're discontent again. You know, like, it's like, how, how many of you ever got raised at your job? Before that, you were like, man, you know, I'm struggling. I wish I could be making a little more money. Then you get that raise, you're like, oh, praise the Lord. Two months later, man, these people are not paying me enough. Well, it's just one of the examples. I'm sure we could come up with more. But there's always something missing in, in life. When, if you look for contentment in the things that are not permanent, you will always find the contentment aspect of it missing. Um, in uh, the, Christian, the Christian world, 
I would say there are two extremes. Before we get into the biblical understanding of contentment, I think there are two extremes of where people at in terms of contentment. Of course, the first group of people would be the ones who are always discontent. They're always unhappy. They're always saying, man, my life ain't what it's supposed to be. I need this. I need that. I refuse to accept the status quo. So this attitude actually is not much different from that of uh, people in the world. And if you kind of uh, give it like, uh, give it more thought, we see that if you seek for contentment in uh, the temporary things, the things that are not eternal, not permanent, we're always going to be making decisions and always going to, uh, that will make our lives worse. So, looking at the world, especially in the Western world. In fact, how many of you have a credit card? I'm not going to ask you for the number, don't worry. Um, how many of you think you, how many of you don't have it? Okay. If you don't have it, I mean, don't get it. I'm kidding. But have you noticed that lately with the development of the banking systems, you see, you see a lot more people getting into, getting into debt. And the banks always advertise great rates, great opportunity for you to better your life. If you only sign up or apply for this loan, for this credit card, and then what happens, you know, you get people who get the loan, you get what you wanted to get, and boom, you pay off that loan for the next five to ten years. Now, I'm not totally against it, but I'm just saying that uh, they're trying to sell us this product, and the way they sell it to us, they say, you're going to be happy, you're going to be content if you only get this. But the result of it, they, they, they're not telling you that you're probably going to be starving. You're probably going to have to be working three jobs to pay it off. Right? So, and then you wonder, man, but now I'm not, even, I'm not even more happy. In fact, I'm less happy than I was. And for some reason, I'm suffering anxiety. I'm depressed. I'm not happy. I wish I never applied for that loan. That's one of the examples. Another example People look for contentment or happiness in relationships. So you look for the relationship and you think like, man, if I can only get a friend or if I can only get a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a wife, a husband, everything will be great. And then you realize that you, after some time of living together, you know, I'm not as excited about this person anymore. I'm not happy. And then you see the divorce rate is going up. You see people breaking up only to get with another person and then another person and so on and so forth. And then another example, you see the rate of mobility in the society is going up. And now, uh, when I'm talking about mobility, I'm not just talking about you relocating from one place to another, although it does take place, but I'm also talking about how you, um, some people just go for like from one job to another, from one career to the next. And then you're never happy. You're always trying to find new things. And those new things, when you get them, they become old and obsolete and boring. And you're discontent and unhappy again. I mean, can anybody relate to that? So, the second extreme is... Uh, the people who, in the church, who fake in that they contend. And this one is probably even more dangerous because, you know, honestly, I've suffered with this um, in earlier years when you begin to actually, because the Bible says what the, that we should be content, like the Apostle Paul was saying, well, I've learned to be content in all circumstances. Then you go to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and it says that godliness with contentment is a great gain. Praise the Lord. It is. And we'll look at those scriptures today. But 
all of a sudden you're trying to put on contentment. But it co at the expense, you do that at the expense of your personal needs and desires. And you just kind of like think like, you know what? I'm just going to give up on that. I'm just going to be content. And uh, here's what, um, let me see. Well, you kind of begin to neglect yourself. I'm not promoting selfishness here. But neither am I saying that you should be neglecting yourself and your personal needs and the things that are essential for your life, the things that actually make up your humanity. Amen? If, those, if you're thinking that I'm preaching selfishness, stay with me. We'll get there. Now, uh, what's interesting, if you go to the Greek and you look up the word that's translated into English as contentment, the word for that is autarkia. Not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Doesn't matter. The, essentially, the meaning of the word is self-sufficiency. Wait a minute. I thought we were supposed to rely on God. Yes, we are. But as long as you're in Christ and you come to the point of being self-sufficient in Him, that's the biblical contentment that we are talking about now so anyway go to philippians chapter 4 with me let's go ahead and uh read verse um let's go ahead and start with verse 10 we'll read a couple verses here i'm gonna have to speed up a little bit guys so you try to catch up with me verse 10 philippians chapter 4 but i rejoice in the lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Now that I speak, not that I speak in regard of need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Amen. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? What's interesting is that the Apostle Paul is the one who learned the secret of being content. And I think the most important verse here, when he, he summarizes it with verse 15, he's saying, I can do all things through Christ. So it doesn't matter what my circumstances are, but as long as I depend on Him, I'm good. Amen? So, if you break down this idea of biblical uh, or like different areas of contentment, we can kind of divide it into three sections. So the first one is being content or being self-sufficient in who you are. In other words, you accept yourself the way God created you. Talking about your gender, your height, your age, your abilities, um, your needs, your desires, and everything that's in you. I'm not trying to, I'm not saying accept your sinful behavior, but accept yourself as a person and love yourself. And Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. And that's very, it's very important for us because if you love yourself with a godly love, you're not going to make decisions that will harm you. You're going to make decisions that will only cause you to draw closer to the Lord and prosper in Him. Amen? So, secondly, you accept what you have. You accept the status you're in. You accept the... The... Um, the job you have at the moment, I'm not saying you just throw up your hands and like, well, you know, I'm content. I'm except being, um, I don't know, a janitor, you know, that's good. You know, I don't need to strive for anything. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, all I'm saying is like you evaluate yourself and you're being dead honest with yourself. And you say, okay, this is where I'm at. This is who I am. This is what I'm doing. This is what I have. And the third one is you accept where you are going. And so 
with this you evaluate yourself and you see that this is where I am and because of where I am this is where I can go but then if you have needs and you have desires and if you want to be somewhere where you are not you begin to seek the Lord and see what God has for you and you ask God for wisdom so that God will give you direction in which you should go concerning this so whatever need you might have the most important thing is to put the Lord in the center and not dropping the ball on it in other words not just giving up on it and pretending like you don't have no needs like everything is good like oh God provides all my needs according to his riches and glory yes but you need to pray and you need to ask for him to give you solutions to give you answers amen and this is very important because if you gonna deny that important part of contentment your personal needs you are going to suffer but you have to do it in a godly way amen so and what's interesting let's go let's go to first timothy chapter 6 real quick I'm going to be wrapping up. Pastor John, don't worry about it. Okay. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse 6. I'm going to read a couple more after that. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing... With these things, we shall be content. Amen? So, another thing is, um, it was interesting, like, as I, I was studying for the, uh, I was preparing for the sermon, was reading some commentaries, and uh, I read something incredible, and I think it's pretty much something that anyone can, I mean, it's basic, and everyone can probably agree with that. That the things are in this world that are really satisfying is um, friendship and love. Knowing that you have somebody as your friend and knowing that somebody, you have somebody who loves you and that you can show love to somebody. Those are the things that really make you content. You guys agree? Disagree? And what's interesting... I'm going to tell you a story, and I don't know if that's a true story. Uh, from what I know, it's just a legend, but it really drives it home. So it's about the Apostle Paul that when he was in prison, and uh, there was this one rich man who arranged the prison visit, and he went there with Timothy, and uh, they went to the cell where he was, and uh, he spent some time with the Apostle Paul talking, and he saw how much joy that prisoner had, how much um, just life was in him. He was happy, even though he was in prison. Of course, he was not happy because he was in prison. But in spite of him being in prison, he was still happy. And uh, after the visitation, he spoke with Timothy and he said, What's the secret of this man that he's so happy? And Timothy turned to him and said, Well, can't you see? This man is in love. Wow. And if you think about it, you take the, like, that uh, we're talking about that our relationship with God is a love relationship. We accept His love and His love transforms us and we fall in love with Him because He transforms us because of all the great things that Jesus has done for us. How He set us free. How He gave us new perspective on life. And we fall in love with him. And that's what really is satisfying. And that's what enables us to be content. And in fact, we begin to see that uh, and we begin to choose the things that are really beneficial for us and things that are not. And then all of a sudden, it's not that I'm cutting certain things off from my life so I can be more spiritual, so I can tell you how great, great of a man of God I am. But because I, when you come to know Jesus, you begin, begin to see him for who he is. And you just begin to realize that, you know what? 
a lot of things I've been doing, they just fluff. I don't need them anymore. I'm going to cut them off because they're just a burden. They're not going to take me any further. And uh, in fact, you know, it's like if, you, if we use the love analogy in a human relationship, you know, when a man and a woman are deeply in love with each other, I mean, your main focus is just on that person. But how much greater is it with God, the creator of the universe, your heavenly father, who is taking care of you, who forgives you all of your sins and who's giving you eternal life. And you're like, man, I'm so in love with him. And I want to do things that will please him and make him happy. Amen? And that's the secret of contentment. And, the, and I pray and I hope that each and every one will just come to realize that. That contentment is the key to happiness. But not contentment for the sake of contentment. It's when we are content in Christ. When we are content in Him and we know that He's sustaining our lives and He will provide for us. That God will meet all my needs according to His riches and glory for real. And we're not just quoting that for the sake of quoting. But we, know, we, we say that because we know it and we truly believe in it. Amen. Let's pray. <sighs> I hope this encouraged somebody today. And when I realized that this was something that truly set me free. And I want to challenge you today. Well, first and foremost, if you, if you feel like your life is a mess... You running from place to place, hoping to find happiness in the relationship, in the new purchase of whatever, in the new job. If you hoping to move somewhere, thinking that you will be in the promised land once you move to that new place. It's not going to happen. I mean, that's, that's the bad news, but that's the truth. But there is a source of happiness. There is a source of contentment. Is when you get right with your creator. With Jesus. And I just want to say that. If you, are, if you happen to be that person. This can be changed right now. All you need to do. Just call upon the name of the Lord. It's like the Bible says. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord. Will be saved. The moment you say, Father, help me, in faith, he'll be right there for you. If you're a Christian, you believe in God, but you feel like the things of the world have been distracting you. Even good things. If, you, if they took priority in your life, change that. Talk to the Lord. Put your trust in him. He will give you what you need in, you, in due time. But in the meantime, He will give you strength to endure and persevere in your trials. Whatever you're going through. And I just want to, I just want to pray for you guys and for myself as well. And then if you want to talk more about it and if you need a prayer and if you want to make Jesus the center of your life, if you want to accept him as your savior and become a child of God like the Bible says, we'll do it afterwards. But let's pray for now. And as I'm praying, please go ahead and pray as well. Father, we thank you that... You are the one who sustain in us. We thank you, Lord, that we can put a full trust in you. That no matter what the world is telling us, no matter how we feel, but our lives are in your hands. Our circumstances are in your hands. You're watching over us. You're leading and guiding us. 
And even when we mess up, you're not there to condemn us, but you're there to pick us up. And Father, I just pray for each and every one here that, Lord, you would search us. You forgive us all of our sins. You make us pure before you. Make us righteous in your eyes, Lord. And Father, help us to trust in you. Help us to trust in you. Give us a strength. Give us boldness to confess you before men. And not be ashamed of the gospel. Father, I pray for all those people who right now weary from looking for things. From looking for happiness in things that are temporary. That they be able to cast their burden unto you. And put their trust in you right now. And receive strength. And receive that relief they've been looking for. And receive happiness and contentment in you. Help us, Father. And that tomorrow and during the week as we go to our workplaces, to our schools, you still be with us. You still remind us of that. And help us to walk by faith in you and not by sight, not, not by um, what other people are walking by. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Today is a special Sunday. You're not excited about being so special Sunday? <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Amen. You know, it is a special Sunday because it is not only the Father's Day Sunday, but it is also the ICA Building Fund Sunday. Woohoo! Amen! You know, uh, I remember Nehemiah, he, he rallied all the people back in the Old Testament to rebuild the wall. And at that time, the wall is some kind of protection for the Jewish. Okay? And then here comes Haggai. You know, the wall was rebuilt. We know that. And then Haggai, on the other hand, has a great concern when he saw ev the wall is set up, everyone is protected. They have their own houses, but the temple lies in ruin. And the scripture says, consider your ways. And now in the Old Testament, I mean in the New Testament, when the apostles, you know, they all become, I mean the Christians, they, these are the new church, the new age, you know, and with one heart, the scripture says in, in Acts chapter 4, with one heart and one mind, they all come together, sell all their possessions, lay down at the apostles' feet to provide the needs of those who are in need. So I'm not asking you to, to sell down your, your possessions and lay it in, in, you know, in our in feet of whoever, but lay it down in God's feet that we may rebuild or build the temple. Amen? So, dig down deep in your pocket, knowing that God will replenish and will restore everything that you will be given to Him right now. In a hundredfold. Amen? Believe, ask, and you shall receive. Amen? Father, thank you so much, God, Lord, for all the hearts of your children, oh God, whom are lovingly and generously wanted to give god lord to be a part of god lord of your great kingdom not just in the heaven of god but as well as in this on earth to god lord lord thank you so much god for their gifts their offering you god that they will lay down at your feet to god lord multiple it a hundred times to god and thank you so much for doing so oh god thank you oh god lord we pray in jesus name amen
his child, his workmanship, which you apply this to yourself. You are his friend, his temple, his vessel, a co-laborer, and his witness. You're a soldier, an ambassador, a building, a temple. You're his husbandry. You're a minister and an instrument. You're his chosen, his beloved, his precious jewel, and his heritage. In Christ, you've been redeemed by blood, set free from sin, set free from Satan, set free from the kingdom of darkness, chosen before the foundation of the world, predestined to be like Jesus, forgiven of all your trespasses, washed in blood, given a sound mind, given the Holy Spirit, adopted into God's family, justified freely by His grace, given all things pertaining to life, given great and precious promises, given ministry of reconciliation, given authority over the enemy, given access to God, and given wisdom for free. In Christ, you are complete, totally in Him, free forever from sin's power. You're sanctified. You're fit for the Master's use. You're loved eternally. You're eternally kept in the palm of His hand. You're kept from falling. You're kept by His very power, and you're not condemned. You're one with the Lord. You're on your way to heaven, quickened by His mighty power, seated in heavenly places. You're the head and not the tail. You're the light in darkness. You're a candle in a dark place. You're a city set on a hill. You're the soul of the earth. You are His sheep. You're a citizen of heaven. You're hidden with Christ in God and protected from the evil one. You're kept by the power of God. You're secure in Christ. You're set on a rock. You're more than conqueror. You're born again. You're a victor. You're healed by his stripes, covered by his blood, sheltered by his wings, and hidden in his secret place. In him you have access to the Father, a home in heaven waiting for you, all things in Christ, a living hope, an anchor to your soul, a hope sure and steadfast, authority to tread on surface, power to witness the tongue of the Lord, the mind of Christ, boldness and access, peace with God, and faith like the grain of mustard seed. And in Christ you can do all things, find mercy, come boldly to his throne, push the fire down to the enemy, tread on him like a serpent, declare the liberty to the captives, pray always, chase a thousand, defeat and overcome the enemy, and tread Satan underfoot, and the only things you cannot do in Christ is be separated from God, perish or be lost, be moved, be taken out of your father's hand, be charged or accused, or be condemned. Thank you, Father. You have such a legacy for us. You know, it's a real blessing to have this opportunity to call the maker of heaven the absolutely powerful God, to know him as your father, the one who is loving, the closest, who cares for you, provides for you. Happy Father's Day! Hallelujah! <laughs> you know, uh, today is the very special Sunday. Uh, next Sunday we are going to have uh, the day when we will celebrate the uh, young people who finish their studies in the universities and who graduate from the universities and from ICA. Uh, it, it, will, it will happen next Sunday. But today is also a very special day, because it is Father's Day. Dr. Len, it is your day! <laughs> and you know, our Heavenly Father is so good. He brought to us the fathers from, from, from the far, far place. And uh, we are so happy to introduce to you here these this, uh, families uh, of those brothers and sisters who you know, who faithfully serve in our church. And, and Father gave these young people the opportunity to see their fathers right here. <laughs> and I'm talking about Sarah. Her parents are here. Would you greet them? <laughs> Father Sam and uh, Mother Mother. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and also parents of our dear brother Michael Dion. Brother Lucky 
and mercy, Sister Mercy. Hallelujah. And I'm so happy I can in, uh, in, invite Brother Lucky. Would you please pray for us and, and ex, ex, just share the, the heart with us. May, may the Lord strengthen uh, those young people that are still waiting to see their fathers. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, my name is Lucky Dion. I am a father, <laughs> but before I was a father, before I'm a father, I am a husband. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I'm here with my wife and uh, brother Sam Are and uh, the wife, uh, mother, they are also our friends, their friends and colleagues. Praise the Lord. Um, now, before I go on, I just want to say thank you so much to ICA. You know, for the great work you're doing here in Moscow. I remember some years ago, uh, over six years ago now, when I came with Michael, you know, sending Michael to Moscow. Uh, one of our fears was uh, uh, a godly environment in which to develop uh, apart from coming for academic uh, purposes. Praise the Lord. And uh, we've heard so much about ICA. And what we hear is really good. And we thank you so, so much. And we've prayed for you. And we'll continue to pray for you that the Lord will keep strengthening you for this great work you're doing in Moscow. Thank you so much. May the Lord continue to bless you. Now, my wife uh, woke me up this morning and said, Happy Father's Day. And I said, Wow, it's Father's Day. I thought it's always Mother's Day, Women's Day, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, today is Father's Day and we've been celebrated. We thank God for that. Um, but I just want to share very, uh, I just want to, I'm not here to preach, you know, but just to give a word, you know, uh, on this Father's Day. You know, it's so unique because um, as fathers, we are designed to reflect the image of God who is our eternal father. You know, and um, many times when I think of it, you know, even the worst of men, you know, when it comes to fatherhood, you know, they do everything, you know, to, to, to you know, they can give the world to their, to, to their children. You know, Michael is our son, and I tell you, if I own the whole world, I would give to him. Without, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, that's just to tell you how much, if I could think that way, and if I could do that, you know, how much more our Heavenly Father. You know, I stand here to tell you today that God is our Father. He's your Father. And He loves you so, so, so much. And He will give the world for you. Not, um, we don't work in order to earn. God takes responsibility over our lives as being our Father. He's glad to give us everything. He loves us so very, very much. Praise the Lord. Uh, I've been told I have 10 minutes and I want to be a very obedient servant. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I just want to let us know that, look, you have your father's DNA. You know what that means? I just pray that we get to understand what it means to say the God of the universe is your father. It's my father. You know, that, that's the greatest revelation that Jesus brought to the earth. To introduce God as our father. You know, if only that can get into you, that God is your father, it will solve virtually all the problems we have. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, but what does it, because it's our father, he can give us everything, he can do everything for you. Let me tell you something that uh, a very dear sister of ours some years ago, he's gone, she's going to be with the Lord now. 
she shared something with us. She said, one time she went to the Lord and the Lord had to rebuke her for one thing and said to her that, look, don't you ever come into my presence believing that I don't love you because I love you so much. Praise the Lord. We talk about confidence. We talk about contentment. See, even if God doesn't do anything else for me, to say that it's my father is enough. I am satisfied. I do not serve him because I want the reward. I serve him out of gratitude. He loved me. I love him because he first loved me. So we love him because he first loved us. Praise the Lord. You know, and if there's anything I want to let you know this morning, is to remind you, is to tell you that, look, you have a father. And as you go into the world, no matter the challenge you face, know that you have God as your father. And as your father, it takes every responsibility to protect you, to preserve you, and to provide for you. And he does it gladly. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now what does he want from us? What can we give to him? There is one commandment in the word. And it says. Thou shall love the Lord your God. With what? With all your heart. With all your mind. With all your soul, all your being, all your strength. If you can give God your mind, if God can have your mind, I tell you, you'll do exploit in the world. God can do anything with you. So my counsel to you today, because God loves you, give him your mind. And finally, don't just plan to exist plan to live. Amen. Don't just exist. Please live. And the place to begin to live is in God. And I want to tell you young people here that God has a plan for your life. And his plan for you is good. His plan for you is bigger than the little plans you have in your, in your head. Abandon your own plans and let him have his way. His plan for you is better. He said, I know the thoughts that I have for you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Pastor John has asked us to pray for fathers today, and we just want to do that because when I think of me being a father, and I, to think that I'm supposed to be reflecting God as my father. Let me tell you, my children think I'm the best father in the world. And we have three of them. Michael is the first. It's Michael here. Michael Dion huh? is our first. He has a younger sister who graduated some two years, three years ago. She sent me a message this morning. She said, you are the best best dad in the world. And that's the way they all think. <laughs> but, you know, when they say that, I just, you know, I feel like I'm not even doing enough. But God is the best dad there is. Hallelujah. Now, we just want to say a word of prayer for fathers here. How many fathers are here? Amen. Amen. You want your children to testify to the world that you are the best dad there ever is. We want to pray for you that the Lord will grant grace to be the best you can be for him. And how many will be fathers are here? You intend to be a father someday soon. <laughs> we also want to pray for you. I just want to ask my brother Sam Ari to come over. We just pray for you. Can you stand on your feet, please? And we'll pray for you. Amen. 
that the Father will make you a father like him. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Thank you, our Father, the God of heaven, the creator of things that can be seen and the things that cannot be seen, the very origin of life. That is why you are a father. You were called the father of Adam because you originated, I mean, he originated from you. You gave him your very life. As a father, you are so generous. You do not just keep to yourself that you are father as high and glorious as you are. But you decided to share your own very life with us, your children. Father, on this Father's Day, we worship you. We bless your name for who you are. As a mighty God, the immortality that dwells in approachable light in heaven. The person that is the very light of heaven. Everything that you are, you share with us here on earth. For as you are in heaven, so we are here on earth. That you have shared with us everything that is pertaining to life and godliness. That according to your divine promises, we should share in your very divine nature. So we share in the nature of our Father. We worship you. We honor you. Be exalted. Be praised. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of us fathers here, when we look at ourselves and the way we have played the role, and the way you play your role to us as our father, we feel incomplete, we feel incompetent. But thank you because it is not what we do in ourselves, but what you do through us. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We lift up our hands to you. All of us who are fathers and will be fathers that are here. And we ask, oh God, thank you for making us who we are. Thank you for making us what we are. Thank you for giving us responsibility to be the source of life to men and women here on earth. By this very nature, you make us leaders. Father, we bless you. We accept that rules once again. And we ask for all the necessary strength, mercy, and ability to play our role perfectly. Grant to us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. And dear fathers here who are failing, Lord, we ask for help. We ask for strength. Are there people that are here who are from parents, who are from fathers, that have failed? Father, we pray you will heal their hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ. We bless your name because you have heard. As we move on from here, we ask that we will walk before you. You told our father Abraham, say, walk before me and be perfect. That we will walk before you and be perfect. That you will have confidence in all like you had confidence in Abraham. That he will command his children to walk in his way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. How do you feel, fathers? <laughs> you know, I have a very short request to everyone. I know, I, I, you know, I got the, the message today. Congratulations. It said, it's easy to become father. It's not that easy to, to be a good daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have a very intimate request to every person sitting here whatever 
your father is. Love him. Request him. Care for him. And, and respect him. Announcements. <laughs> Maya! <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. Today is indeed a special day because we have two preachers. Thank you, Brother Dre and Daddy Lucky. And for today's announcement, after the service, we will have a Russian service that will start at 12.30 to be followed by our Filipino service that will start at 2.30. And as Dre reminded me, we'll have the bread and butter class for the English-speaking brethren. And for the Filipino, we will have our discipleship that will start also at 1 o'clock. And next Sunday, don't forget, at we, as we celebrate with our graduates, we'll have one service, a combined special service for them. Amen. And also, we're inviting you for the youth camp for the youth like me. We will have a youth camp on July 6 to 10. Announcement will be, more infos will be posted on screen. Simon, video, включи, пожалуйста, или что там есть, фотография. Yes, this is an invitation to the young people. Uh, if uh, you would like to visit the beautiful city of Tambov, and uh, visit the youth conference over there. Uh, we are invited to get there from 6th to 9th of July. It is 450 kilometers away from Moscow. And uh, if uh, you desire to go there and participate in that conference, which will be uh, led by Pastor Hyman Wood, uh, he will be main speaker over there, uh, and by local pastors, uh, just see me after the service, okay? And we will make a group and see uh, how to get there and, and, and uh, uh, may God bless our efforts. So this is a little announcement. And uh, one more thing I would like to do. I would like to greet those people that are here first time. I would like to ask a very short question. What country you represent here? Because we are the people from all over the world. More than 50, 60 countries are represented in this little hall. But uh, every time we see a new person, we feel enriched. We feel blessed by God. And we know that you are not by chance here. Holy Spirit brought you here and may God use you for His glory. So, uh, if this is your first visit to the International Christian Assembly, would you be so kind to stand up and let us know what country you represent. In Jesus' name, hallelujah! Yes, let's greet, let's greet our wonderful people who are first comers here. Let, 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 let's start with you. So, you're from Philippines! Hallelujah! <laughs> you will surely find many people from Philippines in this place. And you are? Philippines! God bless you! God bless Philippines! Hallelujah! Thank you for being with us. And uh, I met this uh, beautiful couple. And let us know where you are from. Latvia, Riga, hallelujah, God bless Latvia, God bless Riga, and you are? Russia, Russia. <laughs> Father, please bless this country in Jesus Christ's name, thank you for being with us, and uh, we see more people, where are you from? <laughs> Philippines, <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> and another girl is from? Philippines? Wow! Hallelujah! This is wonderful, you know? Philippines are absolutely incredible. I don't know. How many people do you have over there? 
even in our, in our vast country, I feel like it's an invasion. <laughs> God bless Philippines. Thank you for being here with us. And uh, another person there from Philippines. <laughs> oh, God bless your fathers in Philippines. In Jesus Christ's name. Anyone else? I miss someone? No? Everybody. Everybody, I would like to ask you, uh, our ushers have given to you the first time visitor's card. Would you please fill them out? And uh, right after the service, you will go through the door. On your left, you will see a little table and beautiful girls from Philippines are standing there. They are our ministers. They wait for you and for your information card. And please come and trade that little card to the wonderful souvenir from ICA Moscow. In Jesus Christ's name, and we pray blessings upon your stay in Moscow, and wherever you are here on Sundays, we will see you again. Amen? Amen. So welcome, welcome. Let's celebrate the Lord every Sunday. And uh, now I would like to just say the word of prayer before we go and, and uh, empty this hall for the next service. Would we stand and pray together? Surely God wants to be glorified through your life, through the life of His church everywhere you go. He wants to, uh, to, to show you as the letter to other people. And may they read the testimony of Jesus Christ in your life. And you know, he also wants to, 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 to bring his power right there in that place where you will be testifying of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to, to see his signs following your testimony. The word of God that you pronounce. So now before we go, if anybody has no strength here. If anybody here feels sick, whatever sickness, whatever disease you feel, whether spiritual or uh, disease of your soul, something wrong is with your feelings, maybe in your body, let's pray now. May God, the source of grace and power, strengthen you. Amen? Just raise your hand up. Father, in Jesus Christ's name, right here, right now, we want to obtain your mercy and your power. Father, we ask you to heal those people that are sick. May they rejoice in Jesus Christ and regain strength from, from, from above. Father, we ask you to touch those people that stay in their homes because they're sick. We particularly pray today for Dr. Abu. Father, I ask you for my son, touch him and, and may he be totally recovered. God, may, may he Stay free from all fears, loving you. Every person that needs your special touch, God, right now, put your hand upon the shoulder. God, put your hand upon the shoulder and speak the word of power in our lives. May we go and Bring glory to your holy name in every place by your special pray presence in us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give thanks to God. Hallelujah. And let's greet each other and have some coffee together. Or tea. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Lord.